Hello and welcome to another video and today's topic is going to be my setup of the budget desktop including the theming and also how I set up the panels for the budget desktop. So first of all let's take a look at my displays. So as you can see here I have two monitors connected to this computer. I use this big widescreen one as my main display and the second one, the smaller one, is used as a kind of auxiliary display. I currently just put the screen recording application OBS on my auxiliary display so if I show you my whole desktop you don't see OBS on this because this one is only the big uh, screen you can see here. So if we take a look at my budget desktop settings you can see that I use the adapter green uh, theme for the desktop theme and the telegreen icon set for the icons and I already made a video on how to make the budget desktop look good where I explain how to find and install these widgets and icon sets and that method if you use that you can do that even if you don't have root access to the computer but in that case these uh, themes will only be available to your user. I also made a video about how to create custom packages for Arch Linux where I showed you that I made packages from these uh, icon sets and these uh, themes which I can just install with Pacman for all users system wide. If you don't want to use this kind of methods you can just go to the Arch Linux homepage and look around the repositories because there are some themes and icon themes that are available directly from the repositories and you can just install them using Pacman but also you have to be root on the computer to be able to do that. Next thing is going to be panels. So in the budget desktop you can add four panels bottom, top, left and right and here you can see I have bottom panel which is a this long thing here and then I have a top dock and a left dock. So all these panels can be set up in different ways. So as you can see here there is a dock mode which is turned off for my bottom panel. So if it's in dock mode then it means that it will only take up as much space as it requires. So as much as the icons fill up here and as much as all these widgets fill up here but bottom panel is not it's another dock so dock mode is turned off so it will always take up all space here there is there the position you can change here if you want to size is you can increase the size and decrease the size to uh, let's see it's increasing the size and decreasing the size back you can uh, basically change how big your panel should be. You can turn on hiding and transparency. So I don't like transparent things and I like things to hide in case of the docks for example I want them to be hidden but I don't want my bottom panel to be hidden. Shadow and stylus. This is just minor stylistic changes. So let's take a look at the whole uh, desktop here so you can see that my bottom uh, panel is never going away but the top dock and the left dock will move out of the way if I have, a, uh, have some window going there. So to have all these applets that I have you have to install not just the budget, des budget desktop but also budget desktop extras or budget, es budget extras. You have to install budget extras from the Arch Linux repositories and this will contain all these um, applets that I have here. So I have the budget menu. You can turn on the budget menu label if you want to, but I don't like it. it if you want a more closer look to the Windows 95 style things, then you might want to turn this label on. I don't like it. I changed the menu icon to have the budget icon here. So this is the um, logo of the budget desktop. I find it very cute. I like it. You can change the appearance of this. I just turn all these things off. You can turn on the compact mode and then, every, then there is no categories, only the icons. You can 
turn on show headers, which means that even in this case you have it categorized. So I guess these two should be used simultaneously. And then roll over mouse is uh, you just well average switches very fast you don't have to click on so you just roll the mouse over and if you don't turn that on you have to click on the category to go in if you turn that on I don't like it I like clicking on it so user indicator will show you lock suspend hibernate research shutdown and logout and then this task list is this classic uh, Windows 95 style long task list here and this will all this you there is no settings for this but this will always show the uh the icons or the applets or the windows that are on the current workspace so if you change your workspace workspace and open another application for example inkscape you only see inkscape now if you go back to the other workspace you cannot see inkspace there so this is the basically the default and unchangeable behavior of this uh, task list. If you go to the system tray, the applications, some applications have system tray icons like my desktop uh, background changer. It has an icon here, so I can use that one. OBS has an icon when it's running. My input method application and network manager also has one. Notifications, you can open the Raven sidebar we, we focused on the notification panel with this icon. The status indicator only has the sound settings on it right now. Nightlight is an applet that you can use to change the color of your screen so in the evening you can make it more red so it won't disturb your uh, sleeping rhythm. And then there is weather show, I like this applet. Especially if I turn on this only dynamic pan or, or dynamic panel icon because then it will show me the current weather condition even on this icon without me clicking on it. But if, you, if I click on it then it will show a more detailed forecast. You can have a desktop applet for this one. I don't really like it. You can change the city by click by typing here. You can use the imperial measurements such as Fahrenheit and miles per hour if you want to. Clock does not have settings here but if you click on here there is a preferences bar where you can remove or show the date, you can show seconds if you want or you can switch to 24 hour time or AM PM. There is a Raven trigger which will open you the Raven sidebar, which is the thing I really like about this budget desktop, this Raven sidebar, it's quite nice, I think. It has a lot of sound settings and a very nice looking calendar. And I really like this kind of sidebar in Windows 10 too, so... Yeah, that's one of the reasons I chose budget desktop. And there is the show desktop button, if you click on it, all windows go back to minimized mode and if you click on it again the windows come back to your screen okay so top dock is uh, only containing an icon task list it is the windows group window grouping is turned on so if i open here another instance of inkscape that will still only have one icon up there so it will not rest restrict to workspace would mean that only the things that are in this workspace should show up but because I only show favorited so it, all these icons let's uh, zoom in there so all these icons have this star turned on which means they are all all favorited and that would mean that they will always be here so the restrict to workspace is not really a meaningful option for this. Lock icons is just, if it's locked, then you cannot uh, move them around. It doesn't really matter, I don't really change this order, so I could turn on the lock and then 
I cannot move them. It doesn't really matter, I don't move them anyways. So, uh, show only favorited and show all windows on click is turned off. So if I just click on Inkscape, if these are all minimized, only one window will open and I can just right click if I want to choose another window there. And the left dock has a little more things on it. It has the app launcher, which is this icon here. So here I can edit what applications of all the installed applications I want to appear here. And I just chose these uh, office uh, suit applications and the text editor here. So I use this left panel to have this icon task list on. It also has Windows grouping and the well, it does not only show the favorited icons, so I favorited three things here. Which is the file manager, the uh, terminal emulator and the web browser. The other things are not favorited here. So these three icons are the icons I use the most. So I decided to put them here as kind of always being here. But also all the applications that are open, so no restriction to workspace. You can see that Inkscape goes away if I turn on restricting workspace or Inkscape has two icons now that I turned off the window grouping. So this is kind of useful in that case because I can just click here and it will bring me directly to the workspace where I was working with Inkscape. And if I just click on this and it will bring me back to this workspace. That is kind of neat. It helps me not just have some uh, very often used applications on this very handy place, but also all the other applications that are open are here and with these icons. So I can use either this or this to switch between applications, which sometimes this is better, sometimes this is better. So I like it to have both places. Next thing is a workspace switcher, where I can just click on any workspace I want to go to, and I can go there. So, I think I showed you everything that is worth of mentioning about my setup with the budget desktop. So, I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned some things about it. Maybe if you never used the budget desktop before, this will make you interested in it. And so, if you like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, share the video with other people who might be interested in it. You can also subscribe to the channel for content in the future. And uh, well, leave a comment about your favorite desktop environment. And if you can set up any other desktop environment to a similar workflow, then why don't you share your experiences with me? And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.